putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. No Trump at all cost. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. That is what the left want wanted. No Trump at all cost. Trump should not, could not become president or else all hell would break loose. The people would know exactly what's going on in this government. I want you to think about this. Have you heard of the term straight shooter? We've used it. Uh, I mean, people have used it. Most of us have used it, right? Straight. Oh, yeah, he's a straight shooter. Meaning, if that guy tells you something, you can pretty much believe it. And we, we get, and you know, you hear that and you go, somebody says, oh, he's a straight shooter. You go, okay, okay. He is. Well, that's what's been said of Brennan, former CIA director. That's what's been said of James Clapper, a guy who has knowingly lied to you. And by the way, he's going to get away with a lie because of the statute of limitations running out for five years. Just do your research. You'll see what I'm talking about. James Comey was declared a straight shooter that I think somebody said he's the most honest guy in D.C. Robert Mueller has been called a straight shooter by multiple people. And there are many others that D.C., the politicos, the, the, the media have called straight shooters above and beyond reproach. And they are now all embroiled in a conspiracy to keep Donald Trump from becoming president. Every one of them. It's a snake pit. I want you to think about everything it has taken for us to get to this point in history where the biggest scan scandal This is undoubtedly the biggest political scandal in American history. And the media wants to focus on Stormy Daniels. They want they won't even talk about the greatness of this economy because they are so invested in ignoring the scandal and not making Donald Trump look good. Because the better Donald Trump would look, the more they would be forced to cover this scandal. So look at the things that are involved here. At the very least, you've got the FBI. Okay? The 12 people have been fired or reassigned. Most recently, McCabe has been told he's not going to get his pension. And what do they do? They don't blame the FBI. They blame Donald Trump, who, by the way, had nothing to do with it. Nothing. Oh, he tweeted. He's the one that started everything. No, he isn't. You want to know who started everything? The person who got fired. McCabe got fired. He's the one that started it. And look, you've got all kinds of parallels that you could make things in life where you say, and you're going to blame the victim. You know, it's like a a crook gets shot breaking into your house and you lose your home over and you go, what are you talking about? This fool was breaking into my house. Yeah, but you shouldn't have shot him. Well, what should I have done? He had a gun. He was threatening my dog or whatever. No, no, no. Call the police. But let's, so we got the FBI. We've got the CIA. The head of the CIA threatened the president on Twitter. Mr. President, there's more to come. What's he got? What has he had access to? Why is he now threatening the president? By the way, bring it, John Brennan, former communist, Islamic terrorist sympathizer. Bring it. That was the guy heading your CIA. Okay, the NSA is involved collecting data and then giving fake data and whatever for FISA and fisc court, uh, you know, FISA stuff. They're involved. The DNI, the DOJ, the State Department, the federal government in general with Barack Obama saying to the FBI, keep me posted on all of this. Can you even imagine in your wildest dreams this scenario? Hollywood couldn't make up a movie that is more intriguing and Quite frankly, the again, the biggest scandal in American history. All of this, and they say, trust government. You should trust them. So what you've seen, Hillary Clinton be freed where other people go to prison or lose their livelihoods. I'll use General Flynn as an example. By the way, I'll talk about him a little later. He's going to be coming back with a vengeance. I've said it now. Other people are finally beginning to see what I was talking about. General Flynn was railroaded and he now can ask them for state's evidence. I want to know all the information you had against me. You want to know who railroaded General Flynn while we're on the subject? Yeah, McCabe. (laughs) Got him to admit to something. You want to know why Flynn did what he did? Well, let's just stay on that subject for a little bit. You want to know why Flynn did what he did? He he was trying to stop the, the carnage happening in his financial life. 
most people believe Flynn took a plea deal to, because he couldn't afford to fight it. it. There's not a person listening to this that doesn't understand that. Sometimes it's better to just go, you know what? I, I don't know what I said. I don't know how you're interpreting it, but I don't have the money to fight the federal government, so I better just jump out of this. He couldn't get help from Donald Trump because it would appear that they were colluding. So Trump had to put him out in the wind. But now he's coming back. Anyway, honorable men like General Flynn, like Saucier, who took a picture on a submarine. Flynn loses his livelihood. Saucier goes to prison. Hillary Clinton has done far more egregious stuff. Nothing. Huma Abedin, nothing. Valerie Jarrett, Barack Obama, they've all known about all this stuff. The, the lawyers for uh, for Hillary Clinton and, and on down the line, they've all exchanged and done far worse than anything Flynn or Saucier have done and not a single thing has happened to him. Now I'll go back to this article. Hillary Clinton was expected to be the person to dethrone, you know, to keep Trump out. And they did everything they could. And that and this writer writes this at the very moment when Clinton had expected the Democrat Party to unite behind her. Its deepest chasm seemed to be growing wider. In contrast to Clinton, Obama held some sway over Sanders insurgents. He came to Charlotte and urged them to support Clinton against their shared enemy, the presumptive nominee Trump, obviously. The insurgency was not the only Clinton vulnerability on Obama's mind. He had come to Charlotte in addition to deflect attention from the news conference that James Comey, the director of the FBI, had held that morning in D.C., the investigation into Clinton's email server was complete, Comey announced. The FBI would recommend no criminal charges. That, that, that was the honey. But Comey administered it as a do- with a dose of vinegar. He dwelled on Clinton's mishandling, blah, blah, blah. I don't need to run you back through that, but here's the point. <laughs> it was, they had to take the good with the bad. It was either let, let us know that Clinton was indeed guilty and should go to prison or they make Tom, Comey the scapegoat. So believe it or not, no matter what these people write, they this was orchestrated. Look, I can't just let you go. It's it's going to be too obvious. So I'll build it up and then I'll say, but we found no intent. Now, go back and look at what Flynn did. Go back and look at what uh, Saucier did and, and a host of other people who are in prison for the same reasons. And I hope Donald Trump pardons them all. He pardoned Saucier. But Go back and look at what they did and talk to me about intent. Now, but here's what they go on to say. From the perspective of the voters, Clinton's twin email travails, the hack of the DNC and the investigation into her server were two faces of a single problem. Call it Clinton Inc. Sanders and Trump were painting Clinton as a Wall Street darling, the establishment establishment candidate. She was the greatest defender and a prime beneficiary of a rigged political and financial system. And that's exactly what she was. Now, here's what they said. The third job of Obama and Charlotte was to humanize the queen. And here's what he says. I saw how she treated everybody with respect. And even the folks who weren't, who, who aren't quote, quote unquote important, Obama said. They said he enlarged Clinton's humility before the crowd because it was invisible to the naked eye. <laughs> I love that part. <laughs> with his jacket and tie off. In the cuffs of his sleeves turned and a winning smile spread ear to ear, Obama came to loan Clinton his common touch. Passing the baton to her was a team effort, however. It demanded hard work from countless enablers. What's funny about this is they actually want you to believe that Barack Obama had the juice to drag Hillary Clinton's big old fat buttocks over the finish line. That bony, that bony dude can do it. He had no ability to do it. Get this, despite t- desperate times rather call for desperate measures to block Trump, Clinton supporters bent rules and broke laws. They went to surprising lengths to strengthen her while framing him, both in the sense of depicting him in a particular light and planting evidence against him. Let me tell you something, folks. Take heart. There is nothing. Repeat nothing. The Democrats are going to be able to do to thwart what's about to come. You're seeing the warnings. Uh, uh, Eric Holder tweeted something like, hey, FBI people, the storm is coming. You need to hold strong. Let me tell you what he's saying without saying it. He knows what's coming. They still got people on the inside saying, hey, we can't stop this. 
I want you to take heart listening to this program, the Kevin Jackson show. I've been saying this to you for a long time. 2018 is the year that the Democrat Party gets dismantled. It goes down and rightfully so. And by the way, this isn't just about Democrats. This is about the political system, something that would let the federal government grow to such enormous proportions and to such strength that we fear it. If it can get a billionaire private citizen trying to do good, what can it do to you? He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.